Imagine trying to learn guitar by just watching guitar lessons, but never actually touching one yourself. I bet after 10 years of those lessons, if I put a guitar in your hand, you'd still suck. But that's basically how we teach kids leadership these days. We make our deliberate leadership lessons more of a passive charade than a personal development experience. And even in more interactive class activities, we leave leadership vacuums that allow the more aggressive and alpha personalities to take over, thus failing to give the other students space to let their inner leader shine. I'm Andrew with Brainscape, an adaptive learning app built on decades of research into how students grow cognitively and emotionally. And as much of an advocate of flashcards that we are for memorizing and internalizing key concepts in just about any subject, the whole studying exercise itself is pointless unless students are also applying that knowledge. The way we truly learn something, especially a skill, is through habit and repetition of actually doing it. I remember three leadership curricula that I participated in throughout school. One in fifth grade, 11th grade, and then one even in my co-ed business fraternity in college. And all of them were pretty similar. We had speakers, videos, theory, profiles of great leaders, and maybe even a multiple choice test to prove our knowledge at the end. Those learning activities might make us more aware of great leadership and better able to recognize it in the world, but they don't help students build that muscle of actually leading something and the self-confidence that comes from having successfully led yourself. Which brings me to my epic tip for how to teach leadership in school, appoint clear leaders of group projects in your class. You're probably already having your students do a few group projects each semester, right? Or at least a few small group activities in class. Instead of just having students work together equally, hey, form groups of three, or letting them appoint a group leader as a spokesperson, why not tell your students which group member is in charge of each project? I don't just mean designating a spokesperson to present. I mean someone who's gonna actually get 70% of the group's grade and is in charge of crafting that final artifact that will be delivered at the end. The buck stops at them. This is basically like you're the CEO of your classroom and just like at a company, you would appoint a project manager who's held accountable for the results more than any other team member is. Now, you may be thinking of two potential challenges with this approach, which are totally addressable. How to give students equal leadership opportunities if you're picking just one leader. And number two, dealing with those lazy team members who are gonna shirk their duties because they're not on the hook for the grade as much as the project manager is. Both of these are way easier to deal with than you think. If you wanna give equal leadership opportunities, just make sure you rotate who gets to be a group leader. Like if you have groups of three for a project uh, and three different projects throughout the semester, then everyone will get to be a project manager once. Done. If you wanna ensure that even the non-group leaders do their part to support the project, just have each group member anonymously grade each other's participation at the end. And even with anonymous comments about how that member could have better pulled their weight. Just be sure not to tell any student their average group activity participation grade until the end of the semester. So they can't figure out which project and which team member might have given them a lower score. In business, we actually call this assessment format of your peers a 360 degree review. Since people are both rating their bosses and their subordinates. It's a very common practice for human resources to help identify development opportunities raised by peers. And these tactics will make sure in a class that every student stays honest and accountable to one another, just like they might be in the real world when one of their peers might still be the official product project lead who does get the official credit. 
just like learning guitar or performing brain surgery or arguing a court case or running a company, developing leadership requires real hands-on practice, ideally first in a safe place like your class where it is cheaper for them to fail. The more you give students real leadership responsibility and opportunities to prove themselves, the better you'll be leveling the playing field for those who may not have been born natural leaders and thus not getting those natural leadership opportunities. Thereby, you'll be impacting more lives in the long run. If you like this type of advice, please be sure to subscribe to this channel, check out all our other research over at the Brainscape Academy, and keep beefing up that toolkit that will allow both you and your students to rise to all your challenges.